Welcome back to this tale of a different glass world, World 89. I'm your host, as always, Aster Fortuna, bard extraordinaire. We were following a new set of adventurers as they fled across the desert, escaping pursuers sent from Oasis, the only speck of civilization left in the world. Moret Pa, the gnome druid, a ten Musa, the human fighter, and Mshai Shanti, the dwarven ranger, rode the wind wagon right into the ruins of the city of the spear. A ten Musa had just begun recalling a recent visit to the oasis. We discovered that he had been called into the presence of Bakat, the sorcerer queen of the oasis, unbeknownst to the druid and the ranger. Welcome. I've been expecting you. <laughs> okay, let me get in character. I look at her and I go, What's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> She's really, despite being close to morbidly obese, she is kind of beautiful. Okay. You know, like, uh, she's got no skin problems. Her skin is just perfect for an orc. She, you know, kind of that orange orc look that the orcs here have. She really got a beautiful face. A bit round, sure, but nobody's, nobody's got problems with round faces anymore. But she does look out of place because everyone's very thin in, in the Oasis. Uh, she tends to, be, she's obviously, she gets most of the resources. All right, is, is a 10 composed yet? Yes. So I look okay. at her and I go, Lord, Lord Baquette, you summoned. Yes, I did. What can I do for you? I've gotten word of a, of a traitor. I'd like you to deal with it for me. Uh, what are the names of these traitors, my lord? Well, it's the dwarf, Amshai. I hear he's going to leave me and take one of my pets. Ah, Menshai. I think I have heard his name. Yes. The druid I know not much about. Unfortunately, he let it slip, and one of my little spiders got word of it. And the, she, she's licking her fingers, even though she's not even touching any of the food. I see, and I have like a twitch in my eye from the display, but I compose myself quickly. What I'd, what I'd like you to do is go help him escape. And help him find what he's looking for and bring it back to me instead. What if there is no other alternatives? What if I find this item, but it is hard to return? What are my options? Should I destroy it? Well, don't let anybody else get it, of course. But if it's safe where it is, then just leave it there. Come tell me where it is. I'll make sure to do that. Lord mm, Bucket. Yeah. Would you like a grape? No, I I had a heavy dinner. Oh no, have a grape. There's someone's gonna feed you a grape. Okay, Lord. <laughs> I can't. I open my mouth and I'm just like, oh God, what is happening? Oh, good boy, good boy. Now, after you found it, I don't really care what happens to them. I imagine that Umshai is going to take one of my druid pets, because how else would he make it out there without water? That is true. You have thought of everything, Lord Baquette. Of course I have. That is why you are the ruler of Oasis. Now we should talk about compensation. I will reward you richly, and you can be one of my husbands when you've completed the task. Tell them how good a life it is. And there's this whole, whole row of like, uh, just really bored looking men over on the side. And they, they all just nod solemnly. Oh, so great. So great. <laughs> well, what, what, all hail, Bacot. Long live the queen. <laughs> well, what I know is that she, she has, like, I know, but the other characters don't know. I have a family, correct? If you want to, sure. Oh, probably, I mean, you, you've you got, put it you've on got friends and family. Uh, let's see. Am I married? Probably not. Roll, roll dice. <laughs> Always roll dice. Okay, let's roll. Let's see if I'm married or not. Do I get any modifiers to that? <laughs> <laughs> you get a 
a minus five marriage roll. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I rolled a total of seven. <laughs> okay. I don't know whether don't, that means you're married yeah, or not. That means. <laughs> yeah, I don't want my, I don't, that's up to you to decide, Chris. I don't want to make a judgment call and, and my it, wife hears something. If it's low, if it's low, I'm not married. If it was high, I'd be married. All right, that seems, that seems kind of low to me. So you're not married. Because if it's high, I'd like to say that I'm married to her so that I can get out of that. But if it's low, I'm going to have to say. Well, you can, tr- you can try to lie and say you're married. It would be a, probably a tough uh, bluff there, but. No, I'll. How do we lie in this setting? Oh, we got deception. We're calling it deception. I won't lie. I'll look at her and I'll say, of course, it would be an honor to be in your entourage of husbands. Yes, it would. It is. It always is. So I'll be, I'll be sending some, some of my husbands after you. And, but don't worry about that. It's, they're for putting on a show, and they're my worst husbands anyway. So just <laughs> go ahead and kill them. Of course. Kill them good. I'll get rid of the trash for you. It has to look genuine, you know. Of course. Also, I don't even I don't even like those guys. Of course, I'll have no problem disposing of the Just kill them good. They're my worst husbands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now go along and get the job done. All right. Like always, it was a pleasure to be in your presence and look upon your beauty, Lord Bucket. I, like, I agree with you completely. And then I turn around with a very charming look on my face. And then when I turn around, I get very sullen as I walk out the door. And with that, we go right back into our, we're right back on the wind wagon. A 10 has just hopped back on. We've just cut the sand sailor loose. You've noticed that the, let's make some perception checks. Actually, I won't just give, I'm not going to give away free info. All right. 26. Stupid last roll failed me. This roll was better. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I'm too busy um, celebrating my victory over the rope. And <laughs> so I got, a, I got a total of 10. Okay. 20 for me. It, okay, 20. All right. So, Marat Pa, you, you could notice that the large plume that was following you has stopped at the entrance of the city. It probably didn't make it past that small door. And the crew of that wind wagon's probably figuring out what to do now. It's hard to make it tip over when you don't have that running start there. It appears that the the wind wagon we have lost it. It is it is stopped at the entrance to the city. Did I see anything with my twenty? Yeah, a ten. You can tell that the that the smaller one is kind of in the city still, but farther back, uh, not really close. You guys could potentially lose it here in the next minute. Got it. I turn to them and I say, like I said, my friends, the maiden's bounty has never let me down before. Well, partner, I'm pretty satisfied with what she's done for you so far, but we're not out of this yet. Let's keep moving. All right. Where to next? Well, since the ruins of the City of the Spear is kind of your destination, your last thing that maybe you could do, and you guys can come up with a different solution. You could... Maybe try to hide your wind wagon where you went. Um, park it somewhere in between some ruins so that you can come back for it later. So that's one suggestion. Or you could just go right out to the other side of the city. We have rope and such, right? Yep. For real. You got plenty. Yep, you got plenty of rope. Could we haul it up on top of a building and hide it? Yeah. It's pretty lightweight, so it'd be possible. Yeah. It'd be hard. I don't know how I would feel about that in terms of escaping at the end. Like we would have to. Like, hmm somehow get it back down quickly and on the on the desert again yeah almost set on the road again (laughs) is there a mostly intact building that we could like park it in yeah there are a few there are a few can my character uh use any kind of skills here to see if exiting to the other side and parking it closer to the other side of this area would give us better vantage for escapes like if we needed to make a quick getaway yeah, let's make a, uh, I'm looking at skills. Let's go with survival for that one. Survival. All right, here we go. Yeah, sorry, that's not one of your. No, but let's, it's a 15. You're a fighter. Your, your skills ain't great. Oh, that's pretty good. 
Um, yeah, you could go on the other side and park it on the other, outside of the city. Now that might be, uh, they might circle around the city, but maybe they'll look for you inside. That seems reasonable. Is there is there any inclination that there might be ruins or areas on the other side that we could hide it at? Uh, on the other side of the wall, probably not. not. It probably ends. Yeah. Okay, then I'd probably hide it here somewhere. Just more desert. Okay, so you guys want to park it somewhere, hide it, or are you going to lift it on top of a building? Please lift it on top of a building. Let's find out how that's going to work. I don't want to break. I mean, you're right that getting it down in a hurry might be a problem. Yeah. On the other hand, parking it in a building, there are only so many places they can look, they're going to find it. Mm, that's true. Uh, I mean, if they're, like you said, there's only a few intact buildings. Well, they, they obviously you just go look in the few intact buildings and, oh, there it is. Right? And then we come out from wherever we're we're going and then our wagon is gone or smashed. And that's not good. I think we need something that puts it sort of more beyond their view in a place they wouldn't expect to find it. Now, my character knows that technically I'm a double agent, so I can I could technically just risk hiding it and if they post cards or something around my wind wagon if I returned with the item. And even if I didn't try to bluff my way into saying that I'm serving uh, Baquette in this venture. Well, also, putting it on top of a building and making it harder for us to escape might be better for you. That's true. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the plan here? I don't want to risk damaging my beautiful sheep, but I'm also trying to get you to your destination without problems. How long would this venture to climb I wind wagon up on a building take in comparison to them chasing us down. Do we have the time or luxury to do this? Um, I, I have no idea. Uh, how, how, do, how, how long do I think it would take? Let's make either. I don't want to make you make like a wisdom roll. Those always suck. Let's do a. There's no engineering skill. There's not. I wonder what they where they tuck that away. Let's do crafting. Okay. I'm not great at that, but I'll give it a try. That's all right. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> oh, dear. Look at, uh, if you look at Roll Dice with Friends, I rolled a two for a total of five. Oh, boy. Oof. Uh, it's going to be it's well, gonna be real easy. Uh, well, partner, don't worry about it. I bet we can get it up there in just a couple minutes. Yeah, it's, a, it's a real light wagon, right? We'll just, uh, we'll just uh, throw a rope up there and I'll yank it up. It'll be all right. Does he look ner- like hesitant as he's saying this? Can I make some kind of insight? I don't know if we have that. No, oh, I, I believe it. <laughs> oh, I'm you do believe what it. I, 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 I just am, I am just wrong. He's not lying. <laughs> Looks real confident. <laughs> you could also make a crafting roll there uh, at 10. Yeah, just because I feel like my character wouldn't want to take any unnecessary risks on his getaway ship. <laughs> It's crafting, you said? Mm-hmm. Yep. I th- a total of nine. All right. Marette Pa, you can also make one, although you're, this isn't your specialty. Yeah, I'm okay. Whatever. It's, it's, uh, I'm down with either. I, I, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't care. Well, I think that it, it's going to work. <laughs> we all think it's going to work. I don't want to agree with Mshai, so, but I also think leaving it at a building is a bad idea, so I'm just going to stay quiet. All right. All so right. let's... Um, we're going to use those crafting rolls, too, on uh, how well you do. Oh, oh great. Oh, in that wait, case, wait, that I will okay. do a crafting roll. <laughs> okay, go to ahead. To do the as thing, I'll help. As you're, wa- as you're watching the boys use ropes and stuff to pull it up. <laughs> nope. That's a three. <laughs> oh, no. No, God, why? <laughs> that is an eight. So, so you guys start doing it. Um, you start pulling it up there, and then you realize that, like, the the wheels are really awkward near the top, um, mm. especially. And then you realize that getting the especially the second pair of wheels and so you put it back down and you take <laughs> the wheels off, um, and also you really it's now normally you guys don't you guys aren't active during the day. Right. I mean, well, usually you're you're nocturnal creatures, and actually humans are typically um, what's that fancy word for sunrise and sunset? Oh, uh, I want to know. Forget it. what you call it. Dusk. Yeah, creatures that. Live at dusk and dawn. Hold on. Googling. 
Not seeing it. Okay, forget it. You're dusky dawning creatures. <laughs> Kerp- it's crepuscular? Oh, God, that sounds like a wow. That sounds like a blood disease or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes words don't match with what they yeah. sound like. Crepuscular. Um so it's, and humans would be they don't have dark vision, so they typically are active at um, dusk and dawn. Um, it's really hot, and you guys are doing really hard work. <laughs> so you're going to have to make fortitude saves. Oh, boy. Um, for, so fortitude saves are the bottom left, and so this is to stop you from being fatigued. Can I do do create water to give us something to drink so it's not as bad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, great idea. Yeah. That'll give you, let's, give you a, let's give you a plus two bonus on this roll on top of it since you've got... Uh, all right. A druid with water. Ooh, very good. All right, so here okay. we go. 26 for me. 22? 17. Wow, okay. So that this is the best water you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> She's just shooting water everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the uh, misters at King's Island, you know? I'm just misting everything. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm imagining. Uh, I suppose I should say uh, Disney. I live in Florida now, but... A very refreshing little lady. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's hard to work out here. <laughs> it is. I suppose I am happy to help. All right, so you, you would have been fatigued had you not made that, which is mm. basically a minus one to a bunch of your rolls. All right, so you're in the ruins. What do you want to do? And we were unsuccessful, correct? Oh no! Sorry, you were bit, you were successful. You got it up there. It took a lot longer than you promised. <laughs> the, surely they're they're coming after you on foot by now, um, looking through every ruin around every corner. But uh, the ruins are fairly substantial and spread out, um, so you may have some time there. And also, your feet don't kick up dirt enough, especially in this level of wind. The wind is still very strong, um, even through the ruins. Uh, so it'll be tough for them to find you. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, gosh, what do we do now? They're probably uh, not going to look on the tops of buildings either. That was yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got you into this ruined city, my ranger friend. Now it's where your skills come in handy. How do we traverse this landscape and get to your destination? Well, uh, hmm. Does any of this look familiar to me, Josh? Does anything I have I don't know where we're going from here. Yeah, it's so you've got lots of so you had that temple earlier and lots of stone buildings. Um you'd imagine that something as powerful as the source, so the source is a mystical item of unlimited water um that came from the sky basically. Something as powerful that would probably have to be in one of the main buildings. Let's make uh, some perception checks so you guys kind of look around. Um, and also maybe some society roles too. And we'll combine the results of those two to see what you guys figure out. All right. Perception, I got a 25. Okay. Awesome. And what was the other one? Survival? Is that what you said? Uh, society. 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 Try to think about what right. all these buildings are. And for society, I got a 17. Wow. Okay. So you're looking around and you see uh, amongst all the buildings that are left, they're really... Uh, They didn't use stone for every building, um, and you can tell the foundations where other buildings used to be. There are these, to the players and the listeners, we would know them immediately. They're probably aqueducts. Hmm. Um, But, but, and you're looking at them, um, I'm shy, and you remember that your dad told you about the the floating rivers. Oh. Um, And all these, all these seem to snake up up towards the, it's kind of the higher up area of the city, and there's a large stone building up there. Um, and I, you've never seen an aqueduct before, but you know that water, if there was a lot of it, would flow. Right. Although you've never really seen it. Well, folks, I think maybe our best place to start would be to head to uh, head to where all those little uh, those 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 stone structures start, where they like the, if there there's a lot of water here, it would uh, kind of like it would flow like down the hill, down through these structures. Which means it would have to start up up at the top of the hill. So I suppose we ought to go to that thing there where those uh these floating rivers come out of. So let's head that away. Sounds good to me. Yes, based upon the time I have worked with the water, that makes sense, I suppose. <laughs> All right, what do you guys do? You guys head right there. Do you kind of try to sneak behind stone? 
I th- yeah. I, I think stealth is probably a good idea. Yes, I agree. I agree with Mishai Shanti. Mishai Shanti. Mishai. Uh, all right. I'll try to make a stealth check here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, it's not great. Uh, yeah. Could be worse, but it's not great. I got a 15. That's pretty good. I mean, at level one. 14 for me. Well, I got my third natural 20 for a total of 25. <laughs> wow. wow. All right. With those rolls, you are sneaking very well through the ruins of the city. As we're sneaking, can I talk to uh, Moret Pa? Yeah, yeah. You can whisper to each other as you're. So you've probably got someone in the lead, you know, and then doing the military like, huh! A fist up in the air to stop sign as they peek around corners and stuff. So you got the other two could whisper as they as they do a check around. I'll take the front. I think I think Marat should be behind her. So I'll be at the end tail of that, um, and I'll go up to her and I'll whisper. Ah, uh, this is not anything that matters to me personally, but uh, we are out in this desert, and from my time as a a pirate of the sand. Usually to survive in these kind of conditions, we need to effectively work together. We may not need to love each other, but communication is key. And uh, you seem to not like Meshai very much. Yet he is trying to redeem his past sins by bringing you to freedom. Yes, he's bringing me to freedom from the slavery that he put me in. I will work with him. I do not have to be happy with it. Seems like a okay guy to me, but I've never been a druid enslaved in a city where they chop off our fingers, so. Yeah, she holds up her left hand where the pinky is missing and uh, says, yes, I have. I have seen what the druids see. I have done what they do. It is a terrible life to be pushed into. I couldn't agree more, and like I said, I just wanted to know where we stood. So as long as there is no animosity that might put us all at risk, everything is fine. You don't need to love the man. I can separate my feelings towards him. It will be fine. I just don't want to die today. I got friends and people I care about back in Oasis that I'd rather like to see again. Do not worry, Aten. I shall take care of you. I trust you. You are, you, are, you are the one I trust on this trip. I appreciate that. Now, just so we're clear, I've never seen someone with the skills that you have out here in the desert with my wind wagon. I've never trusted someone before as much as I did you during our getaway here. You would be a great sand pirate. Just, you know, if you needed another occupation. I shall sink on that. Thank you. All right. Let's keep going. No time like the present. So now I'd like everyone to make uh, perception checks as you're getting closer to your goal. The large stone building at the top of the city. Oh, boy. Uh, 10. 16. 15. Okay. Um, maybe because uh, I'm shy he's up front. Is not noticing this, but uh, there's definitely something behind you. Uh, Marette Pa and a 10 can kind of, you know, the, the hairs on the back of your neck stand up a 10. But Maret Pa, it's, it doesn't, you feel sort of at ease with this, whatever this presence is. Uh, um, and it's, you know, something's following you, but don't know exactly what's happening. Marette, we're being followed. Uh, seeing something in the corner of your eye. Feel uneasy. I, I do not feel uneasy, but yes, we are being followed. Can Someone I... Someone should tell Mishai E. Uh, can I look around and see... Can I find whatever's following us that I feel this affinity towards? Yeah, do you, you just st- sit still for a second yeah. and kind of look behind? So, at, at first you see the, the shadow of it peek around the corner, and then uh, around the corner is a large cat that kind of sticks its, its head around the, the side of a building. And you recognize it immediately. Moret Paw's eyes light up like the brightest and liveliest you have seen them yet. And she uh, covers her mouth in giggles and glee and says, Hati, come to me, Hati. What? 
a giant leopard starts racing towards Moret Pa. What the heck is <laughs> this? Mishai, Mishai. It, it, it tackles you and starts licking your face. <laughs> She's underneath giggling and um, scratching behind uh, Ati's ears and just as happy as could be. Maybe a little too loud, I'm just going to say, but yeah. All right, uh, uh, Mishai comes back. He says, hey, folks, I was uh, scouting ahead up there, and I heard all sorts of, what the heck is that thing doing there? What's going on over here? This is Ati. I did not think I would ever see Ati again, but he You're is You're making a lot back. of racket. Oh, oh, yes. Yes, of course. I apologize. <laughs> but she's still scratching Ati's ears and just as happy as can be. Like, kind of the paleness fades a little bit. Like, the paleness to her face, the faded look, you know, a little more color returns to her. All right, you bring your kitty cat if you want, but let's stay quiet. Where did this cat come from? This is a tea. I have had him since I was a child, but he was lost when I, when I was taken, and I did not think to see him again. And he's just been hanging out here. Apparently, that seems kind of weird. He he knows me. He would he he found a way. Huh. <laughs> All right. We can, All right, if you say so. We can go. She keeps one hand on a T as she walks. Uh, about a T's height, actually. She's a little bit taller than him because, you know, gnome. Uh, so she's pretty close to a T's height, and she just rests one hand on his back. Jessica, was, was Moret Pa... Oh, sorry, Chris. Was Moret Pa... Um, does she have any part of her body that's more bleached than the rest? Like, does she have like a patchy area or how does that look? Um, I'd say that it's, well, you can't see a lot of her body cause the robe covers most of her skin. Um, mm-hmm. so probably eyes are the, you know, they were just very lifeless, very dull. And that's probably the place that you see the most, the, the bleaching. So, well, what what color are the bleached eyes? Are they kind of like, what does it look They're like? They're brown, but they were just kind of lifeless, just kind of pale. And, you know, now they're just, they're more vibrant. They're, they're you can kind of see flecks of, of yellow in there. Um, and it's just, there's more to her than there was. Let's zoom in on those brown, slightly more lifelike eyes. And zoom out, and we're we're back at the oasis in one of the f- the farm areas. They've got uh, the the vegetation is adapted to the environment as well as some sort of symbiotic relationship with this society that's th- that's now formed around the oasis. They use a lot of tarps to keep the plants from getting too much sun at times. Um, Moret paws there, sh- using her water to cast it on the root structure of the of some of these plants. Um, the fruit's coming in nicely. Uh, one of the other druids walks over as your hand comes out of your robe to pluck one of the fruits, um, and she points to the bleaching on your hand, and she says, My child, you are much too young to be bleached already. And she's like, she is also a gnome, and she's completely bleached herself. But she's much older. When this other gnome says something, Moret Pa pulls her hand back into her robe, embarrassed and um, and just and just looks down like she's she's much younger now than she is at present, and she's clearly just embarrassed by this happening now, and she's hiding it. I, you need to find a reason to live. You need to find something to hang on to, or else this place will break you. There is nothing. I had hoped to find my mother when I came here, and I have not found her. There is nothing to live for. I will die here. It is my future. And the the bleach gnome kind of just like stares right at the sun and says, Mine too. That is my future as well. And then now we go back to the present where we are. You've been rejoined by your... Animal companion. What's its name again? A-T. A-H-T-I. A-T. That's easy to remember. We have a lot of A things going on in this game, but that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. A-T, A-Ten, A-Ton. A-Ton. <laughs> A-Ton. All right. So you, you're making your way up to the large temple structure. You get there. And what do you guys do? Are you careful about things? Are you 
Looking for traps? Uh, I'm mostly keeping an eye out for enemies sneaking up on us. Uh, That's a good I don't idea. think traps have even occurred to me. Nope. Yep, I don't. I'm not a thief. I, I'm I'm a simple simple gnome. I don't think about traps. So in Pathfinder two, so we're in what the rule book would refer to as exploration mode. So what mm. the way you describe what you're doing also serves as your initiative role if combat were to start. I'm not saying combat's about to start. <laughs> right. I'm just pointing out that you know when you're asked a question like that in this edition of the game. Uh, they're kind of at so for example mike said that um Shai is kind of keeping an eye out for enemies that would be a perception role on an initiative role if combat were to start um, if that makes sense mm. you can also be sneaky so you can use your stealth so if that way of combat were to start you would use your stealth and said what's going to happen is all the munchkins are just going to use their highest ability uh, their highest skill every time uh. i take that back a little bit if i was a sand pirate i would have had a background in you know, getting around and sneaking around and being stealthy. So, okay. Can I? Is there a chance that I can do some kind of um, check to see if there's anything that might set something off, or should I do more of a stealth? Once, thing? once you get into the building, um, you can do uh, thievery checks to look for traps specifically, or perception, um, or you can do stealth. If you wanted to get the jump on something, if it attacked you. Okay. Um, unfortunately, Chris, you're playing a fighter and skill checks are not your, no, your but best thing. This roller has been my friend today. <laughs> uh, maybe not right now. <laughs> uh, T and I are going to, we both have pretty good senses of smell. So we're going to kind of start walking around the room seeing if we, you know, smell people or anything that Once would. Once you get inside the building? Yeah. Okay. I'm sure he was using perception too, right? Right. Okay. So you guys get in there. It's uh, pretty nondescript. There are some statues of dwarves. The city of the spear, for some reason, had more dwarves than others. Hmm. Maybe just when they were dropped in, just statistically, had a few more dwarves than that one. So there's some statues of dwarves. There are some of the arms fallen off, some of the faces, the kind of the nose removed. Otherwise, look pretty good. Crafting's pretty good. Uh, it all leads towards a... You kind of check things out. It all leads towards a hallway, um, a door in a hallway. Um, and I would like you all to make perception checks before you go into this hallway. Uh, We're going to kill Mike's character today. Go, <laughs> go, go, go. 12. 23. Okay. 17. You head into the hallway. So I'm going to describe this room to you that you've found. It's just a stone archway. That this A lot of the stone buildings didn't have roofs anymore. This one does. Um, the roof is still fine. This is probably the best constructed building. What's the roof made out in of? The, in the ruins. It's also stone. Oh, okay. Um, it's holding up. So this hallway is about 15 feet wide. Um, its walls are flat, and there are tiles in the ground, which is always a great sign. Maret Pa, you, you spot almost everything in the room that I'm going to describe, so I'll just start, I'll just start talking, and you can point things out that people miss, that you're that your in, imperceptive companions just aren't even paying attention to. Now, first, firstly, and everyone can see this right away, uh, there's like a, in the middle of the hallway, it's just like a line of like a stain, like a red crimson stain on the ground. Along the walls, it's just flat, although starting around the middle, there appears to be some scrapes into it, pretty deep scrapes. And then Maret Pa can see that towards the top is actually, it seems like something dug into the stone of the ceiling itself. Um, and then it, it sort of dug a, a I, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a an indentation. A groove? Towards the, yeah, a, little, a big groove towards the other side of the hallway. So in the middle of it, the groove begins and then just goes back out the other way, um, ending in a hole on the other side of the of the hallway. That's what you see. Any questions about this room? No. Was my perception to look for traps or just to see the room? It's in general. Yeah. Okay. It's 15 feet wide. Um, it's a hall, right? How long is it? It's a hallway. So there's a doorway and then you kind of step into, it's more like a long rectangular room. with 60 okay. feet long. Um, in typical dwarven construction, they don't like to go in. They don't like to build things bigger than 60 feet because that's where their dark vision ends. <laughs> Um, Logic, it's also I get dark, that. It's also dark in here, uh, so a 10 would need some sort of maybe using something 
um, to see. Although humans in this world have, uh, they don't have normal human vision. They have, um, what's it called that elves have? Light vision or whatever. Low light called. vision is low, what I have. Low light vision, yeah. Gnomes have dark vision. So everything took a step down uh, because not, not much is existing during the day anymore. I see. Unfortunately, dwarves did not get super dark vision. So I can't see anything, right? Um, you're going to need to light a torch. Yeah. Uh, wood, wood is also precious. I have the produce flame cantrip. It's supposed go. to be an attack. Can I just create it and hold it? Yeah, I'll say that that's possible without okay. reading what the spell is. I'll read the spell while you guys talk about the room. Okay. I don't like the look of the trail of red. That does not seem like a good thing. Also, uh, do you see the groove in the ceiling? Oh, I do now that you pointed out. Yes, I, I did. I did catch I don't, that. So something big squeezed through here, maybe? I, I, I don't know. It seems like a very wide hall of room. It does not seem like that would be necessary. Yeah, I don't quite understand what we're looking at here. Is This is dwarven architecture, correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, would you have any skills to understand the layout of this area? Maybe. Uh, do I? I don't know. I could use a society role, maybe, and see if I can figure anything else out about sure. yeah. or, or dwarven architecture. Nope. I rolled a seven. <laughs> but no modifier. No, it looks looks like a hallway to me. It's just a long hallway with a red trail and some grooves in the ceiling. And uh, I don't know, partner. You, your guess is as good as mine. But uh, I say we just uh, move on through the hallway and see what we find. All right. Let's tread lightly. Very well. All right. Who's going in first? What's your What's your marching order? I guess I'll go first. I can't go first because I can't see. <laughs> I've, I do, did the cantrip work? Can I just hold it? Oh, you're making me. Have I can to tell you what it says. To, yeah, sure. What does a it small say? ball of flame appears in the palm of your hand, and you lash out with it either in melee or at range. There's more if you want more. There's more if you want more. <laughs> Make a spell attack roll against your target's AC. This is normally a ranged attack with a range of thirty feet, but you can also make a melee attack against a creature in your unarmed reach. She attacks the darkness. Basically, I mean, I can just continuously be <laughs> throwing flames into the darkness. That's scantrip. I mean, if you don't rule that she can do that, I can. I have. It does say I have five torches, unless you're ruling that I don't. Oh, just use. Yeah, just use a torch. That's fine. I probably have. Do I have a torch? I have a torch as well. I have a torch. So, yeah, we pull out a torch. Yeah, I'm, then in that case, I'd like to take the lead with my shield out. All right, I'm glad you do a torch. The target is a creature. Um, so you could just set them on fire. <laughs> That'd be real easy to see then. Yeah. Uh, so for the for the listeners, the uh, players have simplified character sheets. They don't have the full description of the spell. So I got to the oh no page no I have that. I was just choosing to ignore that. Oh oh sorry my <laughs> my bad. The, the players are actively trying to abuse my <laughs> lack of knowledge of this game. <laughs> All right, that's that's good. We got a torch. All right, who's second in the room? A T and I will go next, I guess. All right, I'll take up the back. Oh, I forgot you have a leopard now. I have a uh -oh. leopard now. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, you move forward as you move into the room, and you're you can see that the the crimson stains are like also on the walls. And it's probably becoming obvious what's going to happen here soon. I mean, it's been <laughs> obvious for a minute, but <laughs> that's why I have my shield out. I'm hoping my character's not knowledgeable in traps. So, so you're you're walking in, and I'd like for a ten to make a, one a perception check, and then followed by a reflex save. <laughs> okay, so my perception is twenty three. Ooh. Okay. Awesome. Twenty two on the reflex. Wow. Does the, does the shield add anything? Oh, well, so let me explain what happens. Okay. So you take a step on a tile, and you are so perceptive that you feel it start to go down just a little bit. And then with that reflex save, you're able to pull your foot up before pressing it all the way down. Uh, but you just felt that the floor just moved. Ooh, I put up my hand. We need... <laughs> Universal hand yeah. stop. Everybody well, stop, son. I like we've got this military hand thing going on. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. This. 
I almost did something not wise. There is a trap maybe on the floor, an area that pushes downward. I mean, that would explain the uh, red trail, which I assume is blood. Yes, let's not die here. I will point that out to them so that we can step around it. Well, then- uh, do we know what if the other tiles are also trapped? I don't want to dance down the hallway here, setting off traps everywhere we go. So, when I was a sand pirate, I'm more of a stab-stab person in the desert and navigating my wind wagon. I had companions that were better at this trap thing. But maybe I can try to look and see if there's anything moving forward. But I might not be able to promise you success. I've got a plus three on thievery. Does this count as like a thievery skill? Traps? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Let's that do that. Let's make some thievery rolls. You've, you've kind of found the trap now. All right. Can we all make Ooh. one now that the, uh, traps has been mentioned? I mean, yeah, probably a good idea for everybody to make one. And also, don't forget your hero points. Um, you do have uh, re rolls from hero points. Each of you have one. Man, this. Uh... Roll, roll dice with friends.com doesn't like me. La, my la, most recent rolls are 10, 7, 5, 3, 9. Yeah, this one wasn't that good for me. Yeah, I rolled a 13. I rolled a 10. 11. Hmm. Well, there's definitely a trap, but I don't know what to Anybody do. Anybody want to use a hero point? Uh, with only a plus 3, even if I use it, I probably wouldn't do great on my next roll either. Mine's only plus 2. Yeah, same. I don't. So we can't disarm the trap. I'm hoping we can go around it and <laughs> be wary of future traps. I really don't know what to do in this situation. Mm. I defer to you who are trying to reach this imaginary trinket. <laughs> I don't appreciate the way you describe it, but uh, right, I suppose... Uh, well, I suppose I could just mosey on across these here tiles and... See what happens. Let me look at my equipment real quick and see if I have anything. Yeah, I've got bullets for the, the little the the for sling, but man, I don't think those are going to be effective here. When Mike when Mike makes the comment about not appreciating it, I go. I reply with, "Well, if it makes you feel any better, as a individual, I like your vibe. It's just I don't put too much stock in stories. I like to." see things for myself. Tangible. Fair enough. Well, I hope we get to see it then. Uh, all right, I'm going to take out my crossbow. Nope, that's not going to work. I'm going to take out my grappling hook and rope. And I'm going to tie that grappling hook to the rope. And I'm just going to toss it down the hallway and drag it back toward me and see what happens. Okay. Make a uh, very easy ranged attack. Just your dex plus your... It's probably for your character... Plus five. Let's see. Mike, that is <laughs> I rolled a very one. smart. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I rolled a Maybe one. Maybe switch to real dice. I'm just, just... I, could, I couldn't even throw the grappling hook down the hall. <laughs> I couldn't even do that. <laughs> this, so this die you, roller hates me so much. Ca- were you kinda, where were you aiming? Were you aiming directly down the middle? Yeah, I was just aiming down the middle of the hall. Okay, you, you aim it down the middle, but instead it, it, you fling it just to the left, all the way in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I retrieve it? Yeah, you can retrieve it and just do it again. It's fine. You don't have, you right, don't have to I'm roll gonna... it. Well, we, we've laughed at you enough. You can you can just keep doing it till it does what you want it to This do. is a really okay. good plan, by the way. It's the the dice. Right. So, you're, so you're trying to... You've got the grappling hook and it's on the ground and you're pulling it back towards you? Right. I'm just trying to see if I set off any tiles. What okay. happens? And I'm going to back up a little bit. Too. Now, the grappling hook itself is kind of light. Right, but as you're pulling it along, it's picking up all the detritus and the right. and the dried out bones and gross stuff that's in that middle of that hallway. Hmm. Um, and eventually, it collects enough mass to where it's weighty enough. It presses down on the trap, and the the door slams shut. So you guys are outside the door. I take it, right? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I, I backed up some. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, the door shuts, and you can hear. A uh, grinding sound. Ooh. Was it the same tile that uh, was hit, or was it a different? It was a tile? different tile. It was oh. a different tile. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. 
friends, I think there's no safe way to get across all this there. I mean, we can't just, I mean, I suppose we could just stand here throwing things at tiles and see which ones are the trapped ones and eventually find a safe way across. We're a little bit of a hurry, right? I mean, we got folks following us. Yes, I imagine yeah. that Bacat's people will be upon us before too long. Right. I mean, if we could get across this, then I would feel a little bit safer because they'd be on the other side of it. But uh, I don't know how we're going to get across this. It doesn't seem... I mean, none of us can fly, right? Am I right? None of us know how to fly. Uh, that is correct. Yep. All right. That's what I thought. Um, Question. Do I sense any small creatures? I, I can... Uh, I have the ability to locate creatures by scent within 30 feet. Well, the other side of the room's farther away than that. Are you trying to find like a small creature anywhere to help you or one specifically on the other side of it? Oh, no, my plan's not going to work. Never mind. I can't actually harm the creatures and my idea was send them out there to find some tiles, but no, I you can't. You can always have your animal companion die for you. No, no, <laughs> no. Oh, so I'll describe a little bit of that room again. So you do, it is that long hallway. And after a while, the grinding, you know, there's, it stops and then there's grinding some more and the, the door opens back up and there's a door on the other side that is now open too. You've got that opening at the top, which leads to a hole on the other side of the room. Can you explain that part again? There's a hole at the top of the so room? So it's like a, it's like something dug into the stone itself. Uh-huh. Um, it's starting in the middle of the room and sort of okay. dug into the ceiling towards the other side of the hallway over the top of the door on the other side. And then there's a hole into whatever room is across the way. But how are we going to get to the hole above the door without walking over the tiles? Does it seem like a grappling hook could be thrown into the groove or something? I think um, if if Mike doesn't keep rolling ones, you could probably <laughs> attach the grappling hook to the to the crossbow, maybe, and do oh. some sort of a rope maneuver and shoot it through that. That's an option, but um, you're gonna have to. I mean, climb over the tiles. It um, says to anchor a grappling hook, make a secret attack roll against the DC, depending on the target. Typically twenty. On a success, your hook has a firm hold, but on a critical failure, the hook seems like it will hold, but actually falls when you're partway through. I'm going to say that you could, in this situation, you could just keep shooting until you get that, until you're successful, so we don't have to make you suffer. Well, that's good, because my rule, I'm just trying a bunch of rolls here just to see what happens, and, you know, it's mostly garbage. <laughs> could I uh, do a perception check? Because we've seen two tiles now that set off the trap. Could I do a perception check to see if there's something about those tiles that is different than the others? Yeah, let's see if we can use something other than perception just so we use a different ability for once. Now, we don't have investigation in this game. I mean, I'm trying to survive. Could I use survival? <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely see, you definitely there's definitely things on the tiles, but I want you to make a society roll to oh. determine what it means. It does look like there's some symbols on there. Gross. That's an eight. I'm okay. Yeah, that's anyway, an eight. I'm assuming. But you I... pointed it out to everybody else, right? Yeah, did yeah. she tell us that? There are symbols upon the tiles. I cannot make out what they are about, but I see them. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty obvious that they're, I'll just tell you what they look like. Um, but what it means, well, you'll probably have to make that society roll. So, if for for example, Maret Pa, you don't know what it. Nope. You can't figure out why this would be important to this room. I don't know so, either. So there are, uh, there's a symbol of a spear, there's a symbol of a snake, there's a symbol of a horse, and there's a symbol of a bird. All right, folks. So those those are the those are the cities. All right, we got the the snake, we got the horse, we got the uh, the bird. Is the bird one of them? It's a vulture. Yep. Bird yep. is one of them. Yep. And yep. for the vulture, right? As it as you're looking at them, as a, the listener would be viewing it, it would be obvious that these are the numbers one, two, three, and four. Do you right. guys feel like you understand the layout of the room enough to to do something? I think we we're talking about using the crossbow. What were you talking about, Jessica? Yeah, what's on the two tiles that set off the trap? Right. It's very hard to make out the tile. You can make a perception check to try to see that one from f far away. You can see that the uh, one closest to you is the the horse or the four. So the four is the one that, that was stepped on? Yes. Okay. 
I got a 13. Yeah, you can't you can't make out that one that's farther away. Okay. Well, I guess with no other ideas, I, we have to do some more experimentation. I'll I'll try. All right, everybody, back up again, and I'll try throwing the grappling hook and hope that it comes down hard enough on a tile that we can figure out if that one also sets off the trap. And so I'm gonna aim at a tile that has a spear on it. Okay. And try to land the grappling hook on it and see if we can see if it sets off the trap. Okay. Um, make a ranged attack. All right. Hold on. I'm going to show you this because I don't, I don't know if you can see that. We're looking can at his you... eyes. Ta da! Natural 20. <laughs> All right. Woo! Ha- had to happen eventually. Yes. I don't know what it's like to roll a natural 20. So I, I decided not to use the, uh, the, the, the roll dice with friends thing because it hasn't been good to me. So... Mike has gotten his loaded dice out and he's ready to play. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you hit the you hit that spear easily. Um, nothing nothing happens. Seems like a solid tile. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Now whether that means all of the all of spears them. wouldn't yeah. go off, it's hard to tell. But I mean, you can hit. You, I'll just say that you hit a couple other spears that are near the front, um, and none of them seem to to be triggered either. So it might be a safe assumption. Well, friends, how about this? I'll tell you what. I got us in this mess. I'll take the chances. I'll try stepping on a bunch of the spears, and well, I reckon I'll probably make it across. But if and I don't, then I'll get all squished up, and you can figure your own way across. <laughs> Roll, well, with friends. <laughs> what is that anyway? It's uh. Mike put it in. It's like a dice roller online. Oh, okay. It's really pretty cool. If you, if, the... you, if you all go there, you can see what I rolled. Yeah, same yeah. here. Let me do that. What, did you share that in the Facebook uh, chat? I, or yeah, I'll, the... I'll share it here. Hold on. Okay, I got it. And also, oh. if, Jessica, if you use it and change the name to your name, uh, I'll be able to say it because I lost your name in my head. Moret Pa. Moret. M E R E T. Is it now? Is it all one name, Moret Pa? Like, is it? <clears throat> how does that work? It's all one name. M E R E T dash Pa. Yeah. Okay. M E R E T dash P A. Um, I'm forgetting people's names. Your real names, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now, oh, Mike's in the desert. I thought Mike. I thought you were at the beach for a second. <laughs> no, I'm in the desert. I don't know. There's a very cooling looking breeze blowing behind yes. you, though. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you said the wind picked up. <laughs> That is so cool. That does look good. How do you do a live video? Yeah, what? Oh, it's not live. It's a. I mean, it's it's a pre-recorded video that loops. Oh, okay. Got, oh, uh, yeah. I see the. I yeah, see the loop see the jump. change now. Yeah. Almost okay. like a like a gif, Mike. Yes. Almost, yes. <laughs> Almost like a gif. <laughs> yes, except with no no unnecessary verbiage, ruining the image. <laughs> it's beautiful. I hate you so much. <laughs> It doesn't usually go this way. You've seen my dice in action. This is not normal. <laughs> yeah, we need to get you on season three so we can we can have a bad dice roller off. See how that goes. <laughs> <laughs>